We the people, having solemnly resolved to constitute India, battled the British for over a century on the streets and in the courts and assemblies to realize our collective desire for freedom from colonial authoritarian rule. This found an early voice in 1895 with the Swaraj Bill, which demanded a dominion state with equality for all and freedom of speech. In 1928, Motilal Nehru's report went further to call for self-governance and minority rights. However, both demands fell on deaf ears. So on 26th January 1930, the Indian National Congress declared Purna Swaraj or complete independence, discarding the demand for dominion status. A year later, at its Karachi session in 1931, the INC demanded comprehensive social and economic rights. Sensing imminent change, M. N. Roy proposed a constitution drafted by a constituent assembly of Indians, by Indians, and for Indians. The INC embraced this view, and after years of relentless negotiations with the British, a constituent assembly was created in 1946. Nearly 300 members representing all shades of political opinion, diverse religions, ethnicity, and from all over India met in the plenary assembly and subcommittees across three years to draft India's constitution. They made deliberate and radical constitutional choices to first transition India from a colonial authoritarian state to a constitutional democratic republic. with adult franchise and representative legislatures and independent courts to maintain the rule of law second to transform a traditional society built on caste hierarchy and patriarchy into a modern egalitarian society based on every individual's dignity and fraternal relations between them all third usher in a multi-religious secular democracy by assuring individual freedom of religion and keeping the state away from organized religion and lastly to restructure a feudal economy based on concentrated or inherited wealth and large land holdings by distributing land and other economic resources and ensuring social and economic welfare finally this new constitution republic was born on 26th january 1950 seven decades later our constitutional republic needs you to be a constitution defender to preserve protect and realize the progressive constitutional dream to build a new india welcome to audio book gallery audio book gallery presents polity and cert for class 8th entitled social and political life third so let start to the lesson number 1 the indian constitution in this chapter we are going to begin with football a game many of you have probably heard of or even played as the name suggests this is a game that involves the player's feet according to the rules of football if the ball touches the arm of any player except the goalkeeper then this is considered a foul so if players start holding the football in their hands and passing it around then they are not playing football anymore similarly other games such as hockey or cricket also have rules according to which they are played each of these rules helps define the game and helps us distinguish one game from another as these are fundamental to the game we can also call them the constitutive rules of the game like these games a society also has constitutive rules that make it what it is and differentiate it from other kinds of societies in large societies in which different communities of people live together these rules are formulated through consensus and in modern countries this consensus is usually available in written form A written document in which we find such rules is called a constitution. We have looked at the Indian Constitution in classes 6 and 7 in our social and political life textbooks. Have you ever wondered why we need a constitution or been curious about how the constitution got written or who wrote it? In this chapter, 
We will discuss both these issues and look at the key features of the Indian constitution. Each of these features is crucial to the working of democracy in India and some of these will be the focus of different chapters in this book. Page number 5 Why does a country need a constitution? Today most countries in the world have a constitution. Why all democratic countries are likely to have a constitution? It is not necessary that all countries that have a constitution are democratic. The constitution serves several purposes. First, it lays out certain ideals that form the basis of the kind of country that we as citizens aspire to live in. Or put another way, a constitution tells us what the fundamental nature of our society is. A country is usually made up of different communities of people who share certain beliefs but may not necessarily agree on all issues a constitution helps serve as a set of rules and principles that all persons in a country can agree upon as the basis of the way in which they want the country to be governed this includes not only the type of government but also an agreement on certain ideals that they all believe the country should uphold In 1934 the Indian National Congress made the demand for a constituent assembly during the Second World War this assertion for an independent constituent assembly formed only of Indians gained momentum and this was convened in December 1946 the photo on page 2 shows some members of the constituent assembly Between December 1946 and November 1949 the constituent assembly drafted a constitution for independent India free to shape their destiny at last after 150 years of british rule the members of the constituent assembly approached this task with great idealism that the freedom struggle had helped produce you will read more about the work of the constituent assembly later in the chapter The photo alongside shows Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru addressing the constituent assembly. Mr Nehru says the biggest question today is this question of war and peace and disarmament. There's no conflict between those. In fact, the whole atmosphere of the world will change if disarmament comes in and these present problems go to a solution. the choice offered to the world is cooperate or perish the choice is of co peaceful coexistence or no existence at all page number 6 let us try and understand what we mean by this through two contrasting situations in the recent history of nepal a country that borders india on the north until recently Nepal was a monarchy. The previous constitution of Nepal which had been adopted in 1990 reflected the fact that the final authority rested with the king. A people's movement in Nepal fought for several decades to establish democracy and in 2006 they finally succeeded in putting an end to the powers of the king. The people had to write a new constitution to establish Nepal as a democracy. The reason that they did not want to continue with the previous constitution is because it did not reflect the ideals of the country that they want Nepal to be and that they have fought for. <laughs>